So in this video here, we're going to see how we can use large language models for setting up whole code bases, how we can use them to do the ground structure when we're looking into new projects. So when we're starting out with a new project, we can basically just have ChatGPT, Claude, and so on, these different tools. We can have them make all the groundwork for us, and then you can do your own iterations and add features and functionality on top of that. So we're going to explore a new option with the Claude 3.5 Sonnet model, which acts like outperforms the ChatGPT model, so the GPT-4 O model. So we're going to see that interface. They also have some artifacts where you can have an interactive interface. So you can have it write websites, interfaces, and so on. And then you can interact with them on the right side. It can execute code and all of that. So we're going to see all these things throughout the video. This is Nirola from Verpex. Let's get into it. So first of all here, let's go and take a look at the benchmarks for the Claude 3.5 Sonnet model because it acts like outperforms GPT-40 in pretty much every situation. They have a really good interface to work with, very similar to ChatGPT and so on, which you're probably familiar with. Personally, I've been making the switch over the last couple of weeks into Claude and I've just been seeing way better results both on the coding side but also researching and just knowledge in general. Also, the data that the model has been trained on is more up to date, which means that all the libraries, frameworks, documentations and so on, the newer versions of those are supported with the Cloud model. So this acts like also a very important factor because if you're working with some of the newer libraries, like they're always making changes here and there pretty much from week to week and from version to version. So if you have an outdated version or if you have a large language model, which is trained on data for, let's say, six to 12 months ago, it's not able to help you out of the box and you'll probably have to feed it additional information to make it work. So here you can see the benchmark pretty much all the different benchmark here, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model beats GPT-40. So there's two benchmark here and the case where GPT-40 beats it is for zero shot learning, but just with a very tiny margin. The other one down here is for math problem solving. But again, we're going to use this for setting up coding projects and just making the groundwork, keep iterating and so on on models and setting up whole projects. So it's basically significantly better mixed evaluations here, significantly better even code evaluation here on the human eval data set. So it's now going to take a look at the interfaces. You can still use ChatGPT and so on if you're used to that, but definitely go in and test out the cloud model. The interfaces, as you can see here, they are very similar. So both interfaces here, they have memory, so it's going to memorize all the things that you have basically just fed into it. So right now we can just ask it, how can Claude help you today? We can throw in our questions, our prompts here directly, and it's going to give us the answers. To start with, let's just see how we can actually create an interface from a simple drawing. So you can both upload images, different types of documents and so on that you can chat with. So the exact same thing as ChatGPT. So I have this example here for a hand-drawn interface, just a very basic one. We can see that it's fairly hard to read the handwritten text, but the model here should actually be able to do that and also create this rough interface and sketch with code directly. So we can use that to set up our initial code base, do the groundwork, and then you can iterate on top of that. If it makes mistakes and so on, make sure that you go in and just to ask it to make those modifications. So it is in the exact same way as you want it. And then instead of like sitting inside your IDE, your code editor, you can just sit in the chat interface as well and do the iterations directly there. It's going to write all the code for you, reduce all the repetitive work that we are normally doing when we are coding. So let's just take this image, throw it into the model. There we go. And then we can just ask it, implement this interface. in an interactive web app. And we're just going to hit enter, a very basic prompt. Let's see what the results is. So the good thing here about the Claude model and the Claude interface from Anthropic is basically that we have this interface over to the right. So we have the text on the left side, the code on the right side, just as we have in a code editor. And this is very intuitive to see instead of like ChatGPT, they have it like in a top down approach where here we have it side by side. So it might be significantly easier to work with. So now we can see that we have the interface on the right side. And this is just mind blowing that it can execute the code, show it directly here. And let's now just pull up this diagram. Let's see what it came up with. So here we see we have some images in the start. So this is basically just the image of the day. That is correct. We have an image icon in the top right corner. The date here is actually like down at the bottom. It should have been showing it here. But again, we also have like the daily image feed where we can basically just go back and forth between those images. We have a search field here. So date search. We also have a hashtag search. So that is the one down here at the bottom. 
So yeah, we pretty much have everything here. We probably need this new button as well. And we can go in and do iterations, just ask it to do these modifications. But let's now just go in and do some interactions. We can go back and forth with these arrows. We can do the search. We can do hashtag search. And then we can basically just type it in. We can click all the buttons in here and so on, but this is just for the interface. We still need like the back and stuff behind it. So we have the preview up at the top and then we have the code. So it's just executing it right away. You can do multiple iterations and so on. We have the code directly here where it's using React. So it's importing all the different components from React, from like the camera, search, has, and so on. And also the buttons. And then it also has the HTML code, which basically just sets up all the interface so yeah we have the preview we have the code so this is significantly cooler compared to chat gpt also create a button to add a new image and it's now going to do an iteration it's going to rewrite all the code so instead of doing all the code ourselves doing the iterations on our own repetitive work it's just going to do it for us so we have our images here we have some placeholders to start with we have next and previous image where it's basically just going to select an index and then it's going to visualize that down here in the html code so yeah we inside the code view let's go into back into the preview tab and now we can see that we have this plus icon up here at the top left corner so now we can actually go in and add a new image so you can see down at the bottom you can see this track bar here it acts like just gets expanded so we can have also add multiple images and we can scroll back and forth so it actually like goes in adds a new image and then you can just drag and drop it in here make iterations you can tune it in the exact way that you want to have it and this is just significantly faster to do iterations on when we're using these large language models compared to writing all the code ourselves. You can take pretty much any diagrams out there. Again, the more digitized it is, the better. So if you're drawing it with Figma and so on, if you're doing some basic UI designs and so on, it's definitely going to be able to extract all the information. It ex even extracts the text with the OCR models, combines all of that. It combines the reasoning from the large language models and also the outputs from the vision stuff. So it's basically just one large vision language model where it can do all of this. So it's pretty cool. You have to code directly. You can go in, use it in your applications and projects before you deploy them and host them on web services. So yeah, you can do it with web hosting, you can do it with interfaces, backend structures, even if you're doing like AI research and so on, if you want to train models, even if you want to run your own large language models, even make API calls and so on, you can just ask it for that. We can go up and create a new project. So how can I make an API call to the Claude model? And then we can just take that code snippet directly, throw it into our existing project. We also did a video here early on the channel. Definitely go check that out where we're implementing a chatbot from scratch. So we have the whole backend system, the front end system, and integrating all of that together. We build a streamlit application on top of it, where it's basically just going to implement a chatbot, a customer service chatbot for your website. You can directly just take that backend system, throw it into your website for the hosting, and you have a chatbot running ChatGPT, Claude models, and so on under the hood. We can even extend it to rack based system so you can connect your own documents and so on to it. But this is pretty awesome. So now we get this guide here on how to actually make the API call to the Claude model. So first of all, we need to pip install Anthropic, and then it's just a few lines of code. So we need to set up our client, specify our API key. You can get that inside the website here. Then we can create a new session. We have the prompt. So hello, Claude, how can I assist you today? And we can specify the specific model that we want to use and also the maximum tokens to sample for our output. Then we can print the response, dot completion, extract the text directly, and then you can visualize it in your interface or whatever you want to do with the output from the API calls. Another cool thing that it can be used for is basically like to set up a training loop. Set up a training loop for training a ResNet 50 classification model. So it doesn't really matter what type of programming you're doing. If you're doing backend systems, AI research, AI engineering, or web applications, interfaces, all of that, these models here are very good at it and it has been trained on internet scale data sets and also the best code out there. And do remember that these cloud models here, they're more up to date compared to the other large language models out there. Of course, these models here are always being iterated on. So make sure that you have the newest model available. So set up a training loop for training a ResNet 50 classification model in PyTorch. 
let's throw it in here. Again, it's just a single line that we throw into it and it's going to generate everything for us. And we will get it on the right side as well. So it's really nice to have these explanations on the left side and the code on the right side instead of just having it like on top of each other. So this is pretty correct here. I've done tons of implementations for training loops in PyTorch. So this looks very good. We set up the data loaders. We set up our model. We have our training loop where we're basically just going through every single epoch, optimizing the network based on our labels and also the output from the model. Once we're done with that, we can evaluate the model call the different functions and we can save the model so we can use it in our own applications and projects. So with four last language model, this would probably take a few hours to set up where now we can do it and even do iterations. Because again, if we have like several hundred lines of code doing iterations in that, if you're not fully into it and so on, might be very time consuming and you might run into some errors where these last language models can also help you with that. If you run into libraries, frameworks, and so on, which are not supported, or you're getting some errors, you can always go to the documentation, to the newest updated documentation, just copy paste all the information, throw it into these large language models as well, and provide them that information. And then it's going to extract the relevant information, apply it into your code base, and correct the errors and bugs that you might have. So these are some pretty cool tools. Definitely don't miss out on them. So I hope you have learned a ton. Definitely go down and hit the subscribe button on the video and also like it. And then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy coding.